2025 Science CBT. Welcome back to the channel again, Pep Stars. Now we're looking at the sound part of the unit, the light and sound unit. We looked at the light in the previous video, and now we're going to look at the sound portion. So now let's jump right into the question. Again, we have to move very aggressive. We have our examinations right around the corner, and we're going to cover as much material as possible. So number 16 is... The instruction read, when a guitar string is plucked, it makes a sound. A student made the instrument shown below using wood, string, and nails. Use the information to answer item 16. And we can see the instrument there. So each string of her instrument produced a different pitch when plucked. What two features of the string would change the pitch of the sound? Is it the color of the string, the length of the string, the type of material, or the thickness of the string? So what do we know about sound? B and D would be the correct answer. The length of the string and also the thickness of the string does affect the pitch, which is the the sound that is made and the pitch depends particularly on the length and the thickness of the vibrating medium so the pitch is how high or how low the sound is that is made and this is particularly depending on the vibrating medium In another video, I'm going to look at all the concepts that will come on the examination. So you also want to look out for that video where we look at the, all the different units and the different concepts surrounding the unit. I'm going to be presenting the concept maps and going through in detail to just tighten up on any areas that you might have not quite understood. So you don't want to miss that video also. I'm going to be linking that video to all of these questions videos and then you can just look at the concept video and then come back to the question or vice versa let's move on to number 17 what can a student do to make a louder sound on her instrument is it to move the strings closer together move the strings farther apart pluck the strings more gently or pluck the strings harder and if you think about like a guitar what does the guitarist do to make louder sound is it that they're plucking the string harder right that is usually the case right so the loudness or the intensity of a sound depends on how gently or how hard the object is hit shaken or plucked so that is for any instrument that produces a sound if you want the drum to make a louder sound then you have to beat it hit it harder right likewise if you are using a shaker and you want it to make more or louder sounds then you need to shake it harder Let's look at number 18. The graph shows the length of some piano strings and the pitch of the sound they produce. Use the information above to answer question 18. And we can see the piano keys and the pitch that is made. Which statement is true? Piano key C1 has the shortest string. And it produces a low pitch, so we can look at that. But it says the string length, this is the percentage of the C1 length. And we can see that C1 is 100%. Piano key, C2 has the longest string. And we can look at C2. And C2 is um, roughly 50 percent of the c1 length 
and we are looking at all the other statements too um the shorter the string the higher the pitch of the sound or the longer the string the higher the pitch of the sound so let's look at it um d also was um about 90 percent of the length and this was a low pitch and we see that e and f and g are all medium pitch and then a and b and c2 are high pitch so what can we determine because these strings The strings for these ones here, they look like they're shorter than these ones here. So we can draw a conclusion to say what? That the shorter the string, the higher the pitch of the song. Based on the analysis here, we can see that these strings were shorter and they in fact produced higher pitch. So when we look here, these were the strings A, B, C, C2, and these were much shorter and they produced higher pitch. So therefore we can say the shorter the string, the higher the pitch of the sound produced. <laughs> Let's move on to number 19. Some students were carrying out an investigation to determine the best material for some proofing. These are the steps carried out. They measured the sound level of the alarm from a phone in an open box. They then measured the sound level of the phone alarm in the following situation. The box was closed for the first situation. And for the second situation, the box was packed with different materials and closed. <clears throat> the results are shown in the table below. And we're going to use that information to answer item 19. So where the phone alarm was placed in the open box the sound level was 80 decibels the closed box 70 decibels and we when it was closed with the bubble wrap it was 40 when it was closed with the cotton it was 50 decibels when it was packed with fabric it was 55 decibels and when it was closed with paper it was 60 decibels so which of these two things must the student do to make the investigation a fair test? And what is a fair test? We know that the fair test, a particular condition has to be constant or the same across the level. Say for instance, let's use a practical example. Students were getting a test. It wouldn't be a fair test, like a mathematics test or any science test. It wouldn't be a fair test if each student didn't get the same test right if one student got a test that was harder than the other student that would not be fair because they wouldn't get the same chance of passing the test and that's essentially what a fair test across the board for every experiment would be that the particular condition must be the same right so let's look for conditions that we know should be the same right so should they measure the sound level from the boxes at the same time from four different boxes are using the same box are using the same alarm clock. So what are we seeing here that would make the investigation a fair test that is a constant across the board, right? So again, in the fair test, only one factor is changed. Here in this instance is the type of material. We have to keep the other factors constant, which is the same clock and the same box. So C and D would be the correct answer. And now let's look at the final question from the sound unit. The table below shows the result of an investigation to determine the best material for some proofing. The same example, so I'm not going to go through the table again. But now we want to find out which material is best for some proofing. And if the material would be best to some proof, it's going to reduce the decibels. So the one with watching. the least number for the decibel, which is the bubble wrap, that would be the best for soundproofing. Right? So once it has the lowest decibel, which is the 40 dB, 
then this is the best soundproofing material. So there you have it, students. All the topics that will be coming on the sound. These are just different types of questions that could come. They could test you on when we talk about sound, right? Now we have other topics to cover, such as materials. So you don't want to miss that video also. Thank you for watching.